In just a few short years, Hong Kong has dramatically shifted from its renowned status as the Pearl of the Orient, a bustling free port and one of the global financial centers, to what is now being termed as a ruin of global financial center. This decline signifies a growing global abandonment of Hong Kong's position as an international financial hub. The extent of Hong Kong's economic woes is evident in the following six aspects. Number one, severe decline of the Hong Kong stock market. The Hong Kong stock market has set a dubious record, reflecting poorly on the special administrative region's government. The Han Shen Index has experienced its fourth consecutive year of decline, the longest in its history. This year, the Hong Kong exchange stock price plummeted by 25%, erasing nearly 14 billion US dollars in market value and ranking as the worst performing stock market globally. According to StockQ, as of December 7, four of the five worst performing stock market globally belong to China, including Shanghai B shares, Han Shen, Hong Kong National Enterprise, and Hong Kong Red Chips, with declines ranging from negative 11.07% to negative 27.97%. On December 7, according to statistics from StockQ, a comprehensive view over an extended period shows that the stock market of mainland China and Hong Kong have surged on the top of the list of the world's worst performing stock markets. As of December 8, the Han Shen index fell back to its 1997 levels when sovereignty was transferred with no signs of its trend abating. Despite various reform measures introduced by the Hong Kong government and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, including lowering the stock transaction stamp duty and improving the trading mechanism and listing system, the outlook remains bleak. Bloomberg report that several Wall Street banks have downgraded their views on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Analysts from Goldman Sachs Group Inc. and Morgan Stanley have lowered their target stock prices and expectations for trading volumes. UBS Group AG analysts downgraded the Hong Kong exchange from buy to neutral in October due to weak market sentiment and pressured recent trading volumes. Number two, record low in IPO size. This year has been the worst for Hong Kong's initial public offering IPO market since 2001. Bloomberg reports that the historic slump in the Hong Kong stock market has led to a significant decline in IPOs following the closures of a record 49 brokerage firms in 2022 and an additional 30 local brokerage firms seizing operations this year. Over the past two years, global investors have massively sold off Hong Kong stocks. Small and medium brokerage firms have been particularly affected. A survey earlier this year by the Hong Kong Securities Association showed that over 72% of local brokerage firms were in a loss in 2022 and at least a quarter plan to downsize this year. Specifically, Hong Kong's IPO size this year is expected to drop to 5.1 billion US dollars compared to 52 billion US dollars three years ago, with an average of 31 billion US dollars over the past decade. That's only 16% of the average level of the past 10 years. CEO of Bright Smart Securities Xu Yingbing told Bloomberg that this wave of brokerage closures and layoffs is the most severe he has ever seen. He stated that he sees no light at the end of the tunnel. Golden Cross Formation, Hong Kong stock market overtaken by Taiwan. Since reaching a high of over 33,000 points in 2018, the Hun Shen Index has fallen nearly 40%, while the Taiwan stock market has risen nearly 50% over the same period. On November 29, the Hun Shen Index closed at almost 16,975 points, while the Taiwan's weighted index closed at approximately 17,370 points. This number surpassed the Han Shen index by approximately 400 points for the first time in 31 years, forming a golden cross with the Hong Kong stock market. This development has sparked a popular discussion of Taiwan surpassing Hong Kong. Scholars have analyzed this diverging fortunes of Hong Kong and Taiwan stock market. This disparity is attributed to the US-China trade war beginning in 2018 the 2019 anti-extradition bill protest in Hong Kong and the subsequent implementation of the national security law. The continuous withdrawal of foreign capital from Hong Kong is a consequence of Beijing's increased political control over the region since the anti-extradition bill protest. Meanwhile, Taiwan stock market has benefited from a high proportion of technology stocks and recent booms in AI and electric vehicles attracting foreign investment. 
the decoupling of trade between the U.S. and China has seen Taiwan align economically more with the U.S., while Hong Kong leans towards China, intensifying a choose-your-side effect to its greatest extent this year. An analyst from Taiwan's Yongfeng Investment, Yang Da Kang, noted that Hong Kong stocks are quickly becoming kin to mainland Chinese stocks. In the Hanshan Index Top 10 constituents, major companies include Tencent, Alibaba, Meituan, major internet stocks, as well as HSBC Holdings and China Construction Bank financial stocks, with seven out of these companies being Chinese enterprises, H-shares. As Chinese companies increasingly use Hong Kong as a primary channel for overseas financing, the Hong Kong stock market has become dominated by these firms, making it vulnerable to economic downturns in mainland China. India's stock market surpasses Hong Kong. While Taiwan's stock market has surpassed Hong Kong's in terms of indices, its market value is still significantly less than half of Hong Kong's, although the gap is gradually narrowing. However, India's stock market has overtaken Hong Kong regarding market value. According to a CNBC report, data from the World Federation of Exchanges, WFE, showed that as of the end of November, the total market value of the National Stock Exchange of India, NSE, was $3.989 $3.989 trillion compared to Hong Kong's $3.984 trillion, making India the fifth largest market globally. This is followed by the US, China, the European Union, and Japan. The report highlighted that India's Nifty 50 index reached new highs on December 12, with a nearly 16% rise this year, and it is on track to rise for the eighth consecutive year, standing out in the Asia Pacific region. The Indian stock market's growth has been mainly driven by well-performing sectors like banking, healthcare, and energy, with positive outlooks for the automotive, retail, real estate, and telecommunication industries in 2024. India has benefited from the global supply chain diversification, moving away from China as part of the China Plus One strategy. The Financial Times recently reported that Apple, with with as most of its manufacturing bases in China, has asked its suppliers to source batteries for the upcoming iPhone 16 from factories in India. Tesla is also in talks with the Modi government about the possibility of establishing a factory in India to produce electric vehicles. Number five, Hong Kong as a transshipment port relic. The stock market is often seen as a barometer of the economy. Despite Beijing's recent emphasis on developing Hong Kong as an international shipping center, a key task in China's 14th five-year plan for the Hong Kong government, recent figures indicate a crisis in Hong Kong's status as an international shipping and logistic hub. Hong Kong's economic growth this year has been far below expectations, with export declining for the 16th consecutive month, creating the longest downturn on record. The decline in exports led to a roughly 15% year-on-year drop in container throughout, potentially falling out of the top 10 global ports in terms of throughput volume. Netizens have sarcastically dubbed Hong Kong not only as the financial ruin, but also as a transshipment port relic. In a reality, a significant portion of Hong Kong's container business has been taken over by mainland Chinese ports. The chairman of the Hong Kong Shippers Council, Ling Shen Wu, told various Hong Kong media outlets that Hong Kong's container throughput is expected to continue declining over the next five to ten years. The primary reason is that traders due to tense Sino-US relations are turning to Asian countries and Mexico bypassing Hong Kong. Additionally, higher shipping costs in Hong Kong, coupled with the increasing perfection and subsidies of mainland ports, are widening the gap between Hong Kong and mainland ports. Number six, significant increase in Hong Kong's government fiscal deficit. The decline in export has led to a continuing rise of Hong Kong's trade deficit, coupled with government's substantial pandemic-related expenditures and the economic impact of the past three years' zero-COVID policy. Hong Kong's government revenue has sharply decreased, posing a challenge to the financial health of the government. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, Hong Kong had long enjoyed a substantial fiscal surplus and possessed enormous financial reserves, accumulated through years of land auction sales and the collection of taxes on other real estate transactions. Currently, Hong Kong's real estate industry is undergoing a downturn. With developers showing tepid demand for land, the Hong Kong government has cancelled two land auctions within a year, exerting additional pressures on public finances. The government's pandemic policies, heavily influenced by mainland China, have led to an expenditure exceeding 600 billion Hong Kong dollars over the past three years, surpassing the entire Guangdong province's spending by more than threefold. As a result, Hong Kong's 
fiscal deficit for 2023 is nearing 300 billion Hong Kong dollars, with financial reserves dropping to around 800 billion Hong Kong dollars, the lowest since 2015. In the tourism sector, Hong Kong, once the world's leader for nine consecutive years, fell out of the top 20 destinations following the global pandemic in 2020. In a bid to revive tourism, the government launched a global marketing blitz in February, offering 500,000 500, free tickets free to international travellers. This more than doubled the visitor numbers that helped Hong Kong climb back to 17th place in tourism rankings. But the tourism sector alone cannot save Hong Kong's economy. The city is grappling with weak exports, escalating geopolitical tensions and the exodus of companies and top professionals. Additionally, an aging population and a shrinking workforce are further dampening economic prospects. Pessimistic Outlook from Moody's Corporation International ratings agency Moody's Corporation shares this bleak outlook. Recently, Moody's downgraded several Chinese credit ratings and changed Hong Kong's outlook from stable to negative. The downgrade is attributed to increased financial, political, institutional and economic linkages between Hong Kong and China. Moody's observed that the implementation of the national security law and electoral system changes in Hong Kong indicate a continuing decline in the city's political, juridical and economic autonomy. Hong Kong's officials strongly criticized Moody's for lowering the city's credit outlook to negative accusing U.S. lead rating agencies of intentionally damaging Hong Kong and China's reputation. However, prominent Hong Kong businessman and founder of Chen Kong Holdings, Li Kaixing, has foreseen this economic situation. Co-founder of Victoria Harbour Investment and a close associate of Li Zhou Kaixuan recently stated as the F11 Priority Asia Summit that Lee had privately warned her in January 2021 of the impending storm and a significant economic downturn to follow. Analysis of factors weighing down Hong Kong's economy, experts commonly identify three main factors dragging down Hong Kong's economy. The economic downturn in mainland China significantly affects Hong Kong's economy. Many large Chinese enterprises listed in Hong Kong are now suffering due to the overall economic slump in China, affecting trade and manufacturing sectors. Consequently, Hong Kong is severely impacted by the downturn in China's economy. Many international financial institutions have fled Hong Kong. Concerns over safety and security have deterred foreign investment banks and financial institutions, leading to a gradual transformation of Hong Kong into a lifeless shell. The implementation of the national security law has rapidly deteriorated Hong Kong's economic and business environments. A former chief compliance officer of a mainland asset management company, Liang Xiaohua, commented 10 years ago this was unimaginable. Now there's a mass exodus of capital and financial institutions. Since Xi Jinping's governance, especially with the introduction of the national security law, Hong Kong has completely lost its independent status. He added that under the prevailing political dominated environment and the national security law, there are no guarantees for personal safety, including freedom of speech and profitability. Liang predicts a bleak future for Hong Kong. If the Hong Kong stock exchange continue to shrink and transactions decline, Hong Kong might become just an ordinary city in mainland China, potentially even merging with nearby Shenzhen. He foresees that without substantial policy changes to return to a legal and free system, the panic selling of Hong Kong stock will not cease, leading to the ongoing abandonment of Hong Kong's status as an international financial centre by the world.